Hello everyone. Welcome back to the lecture 2 of microcontrollers. So in continuation with the last microcontroller lecture in chapter 1 we were discussed about the definition fundamental definition various classification and most commonly used microcontroller comparisons we were discussed. We came to know that 8051 from that classification it is an 8 bit microcontroller means it can able to handle 8 bit of information at a time. Therefore 8 bit CPU is optimized for control applications and it has 8 bit data bus, 16 bit address bus and 4 kilobytes of on chip program memory means ROM and it has 128 bytes of on chip data RAM. 32 bit or 32 bidirectional and individual address input and output lines and two 16 bit timers bar counters and it has full duplex UART six interrupt sources among six five vector interrupt structures with the two priority levels on chip clock oscillators so these are the features of 8051 microcontroller and if we'll come to the pin configuration it is a dual in package what do you mean by dual in package means it is available in the pins are available in both the side okay therefore it is a dual in package both the 805131 has the same structure and in spin configuration we can observe that what we can found in the block diagram it has four IO ports in order to communicate with the IO devices it has four IO port which are they that is port 0 port 1 port 2 and port 3 apart from this port it has biasing lines or biasing pins 40 and 20 so it will gives it will enables the microcontroller by giving positive VCC and ground and pin number 18 and 19 it will gives a oscillation inputs or timing cycles to your microcontroller that is x tal 1 and x tal 2 pins are connected to pin number 18 and 19 and the control pin reset so reset pin is used to reset the complete operation or reboot the complete operation of 8051 can be performed through the pin number 9 and pin number 31 address extended lines or address enable lines or VPP also you may call and this pin is utilized that is pin number 31 it is used to extend the address lines or extend the memory capacity of microcontroller these control pin is utilized and address latch enable we know that the port p0 it has both the address lines and data lines are multiplexed in order to latch the address line we can use this ale and psen that is program serially enabled data if you are using uh, serial transferring a data to any memory like programmable memory then you can go for this control pin you have to enable it means you have to serially write the program through this psen pin and i will come to the ports here you can see the port 0 and port 2 port 0 is it has address and data lines both are multiplexed that is p0.02 p0.7 and p2.02 p2.7 that is pin number 21 to 28 so these are higher order address lines means a8 to a15 you can observe here and p1 is completely multifunctional you can utilize for input or output operations directly and port number p3 it has 
pin number p3.0 to p3.7 from 10 to 17 it has the pins of serial communication interrupts timer and reading and writing controls so serial communication pins like rxd and txt so rxd is to receive the serial information and txd is for transfer the serial information and the int0 and int1 are the two interrupt sources that can be connected to pin number 12 and 13 so these are active low signals means these two pins are enabled with the logic zero and t0 and t1 are the timers input for 14 and 15 and uh, write and read are the control signal to perform you have to write the information from external devices or uh, microcontroller to external memory you can go for read and write operations for memory operation so this is about a pin configuration of 8051 microcontroller i will come to the block diagram of microcontroller as of we already discussed it has 4 kilobytes of ram rom and 128 bytes of ram and a 2 16 bit timers and one serial port with the rxd and txd pin and four io ports with p0 to p3 and the bus controller is connected to the system bus so you can observe here with the green lines that is call it as a system bus and oscillators oscillator will provide the timing signals or clock pulse to the cpu operation and interrupt controller which will synchronize the multiple interrupt to cpu okay and various architectures are available uh, in the book resource but here i simplify try to simplify the complete architecture of microcontroller 8051 means i omitted unwanted so resistors and uh, multiple representation of sfr registers i replaced with the single blocks here you can observe in the architecture we can uh, see ALU is nothing but CPU uh, it is connected with uh, registers A and B program status word and uh, special function register and with the 8 bit address bar data line that is uh, connected with the program counter and data pointer register DPTR and uh, program memory ROM and uh, read only memory that is the data memory ram and instruction register and uh, timing and control circuitry with the control pins like psen and uh, ale ea and reset and oscillators with the uh, xtal1 and xtal2 and all the io ports that is four io ports we can observe here port 0 port 1 port 2 port 3 all these ports are connected with the latch latch is nothing but a buffer register which will make proper synchronization between ports to other peripheral components of 8051 microcontroller so total each port can able to transmit or communicate 8 bit of information because it has 8 pins so total 32 pins are there and uh, each port can communicate 8 bit of information so let us discuss functional blocks of 8051 as we know that it has arithmetic logic unit or cpu so what is the function of this cpu is to perform the computations like uh, doing some arithmetic and logical operations like uh, addition subtraction and or etc operation on 8 bit of data one thing you need to remember it will handle only 8 bit of data therefore you can transfer or you can process only 8 bit of information so if we'll come to memory unit what is the capacity of ram and rom from the feature also we came to know that it has 128 bytes of ram 
so among 128 byte it has four register banks and one special function register not one multiple special function registers and bit bar byte addressable memories nothing but a scratch pad memories that uh, we can observe in brief in memory organization and what is the rom capacity that is program memory capacity is 4 kilobyte inbuilt and it can be extendable up to 64 kilobyte and what is internal registers internal registers as like microprocessor here also we are using accumulator and b registers so these registers are completely cpu assistant register it has 8 bit register used to perform arithmetic logical io bar load bar store operation it connected to internal data bus and alu here you can observe that it has the 8 bit locations are 8 bit space d0 to d7 of accumulator as like this b is also having the same size d0 to d7 so internal registers means uh, as like microprocessor it doesn't have any uh, cde hl register instead of that here it was uh, register banks are utilized for uh, general purpose programming that is bank 0, bank 1, bank 2, bank 3. All the registers, banks are uh, having capability to store 8 bit of information. That is B0 will able to store R0 to R7 8 bit information. And bank 1 also having 8 bit of capacity. And bank 2 is also having 8 bit. And bank 3 is also having 8 bit capacity. But the register selections that is which register bank you are supposed to use that combination should be given in program status word so what is this program status word let us go for discussion of program status word so program status word it is a special purpose register that is special function register what you call special function register which depends upon the value of result after any arithmetic and logical operations that means it reflects the status of result after performing any arithmetic or logical operation if you are if your result most of the time the result will be stored in accumulator therefore we can call it as it reflects the uh, status of accumulator okay if any bit is uh, any status you can found that particular bit will be set otherwise it will be in the reset state so here you can observe 8 bits are it is also having 8 bit size and uh, 7 of the bits position are utilized and uh, few bit that is especially bit position 1 it is not that is it is not accessible by any programmers and this is a here you can observe that it has the bit position 0 to 7 so lsb is 0 bit position exo is it was mentioned either you can write p also that will that will indicates the parity flag and the bit position 1 that is undefined so user cannot access this positions uh, this bits and the 2 bit position 2 so that is overflow flag and the combinations of register bank selection that is rs1 and rs0 and the bit position 5 that is fo or it is user defined flag that it can be utilized during special purpose applications and bit position 6 that is auxiliary carry flag and bit position 7 that is carry flag so parity flag parity flag can be here you can we can go for individual flag bits so bit number seven i'll start from msp 
so carry is generated when performing n bit operation and the result is more than n bit then this bit will become set otherwise it is in reset condition that indicates if you are doing the operation for n number of bits for example i am adding the two bit information two bit of uh, two variable that is two values i am adding if you are if i am getting three bits of information then the carry is generated that indicates the carry is generated if the result is also 2 bit then this carry flag is zero okay so during subtraction a minus b there is a chances to get some borrow from the external bit that will be cons also considered as a carry therefore during that time also the carry flag will set so if carry flag if any carry is generated in most significant bit then this carry flag will set otherwise it is in reset condition and let us go for this bit number 6 that is auxiliary carry auxiliary carry so like carry because we know that it has a 8 bit of information because microcontroller 51 has uh, able to handle 8 bit of information if it is if the carry is generated at the fourth that is a fourth bit any carry is generated at the fourth bit and it will pass us to the fifth bit this flag this flag will be set means the auxiliary carry if any auxiliary carry generated this flag bit will be get set otherwise it is in reset condition okay that is if any carry is generated at the fourth bit of the result then it is called as auxiliary carry okay during that time the carry flag this auxiliary carry flag will be set otherwise it is in reset condition and what about parity flag so parity is a concept it is utilized during data encryption or it will checks the or you can call it as a error checking bit okay so there is a two availability of parity bit either it is even parity or odd parity so most of the communication utilizes even parity okay so even parity that indicates that if the resultant in an accumulator has even number of ones then only this parity bit or this parity flag is set if there is odd number of ones then this parity will be in the reset condition okay and the bit position 2 that is overflow bit so it is also very fundamental and after any operation if msb or d7 bit of the result has one it indicates the number is negative and overflow flag will become set if msb is zero it indicates number is positive then the sign flag becomes reset means this particular bit will reflect if any sign number will come especially if negative number comes then only this overflow flag will set if it is positive number it is in retained in zero or it is in um, reset condition so bit number five it is user defined bits that means if you are programming it for any special purpose application you can utilize this as a flag register in order to indicate your required applications and uh, in continuation with the program status word the bit num bit position of 3 and 4 that is rs0 and rs1 here you can observe by the suitable combination of rs1 and rs0 you can select the particular register bank by the combination of rs1 and rs0 the register bank will get selected here if the combination of rs1 and rs0 as a 00 it will go for the register bank 0 okay and if it is 0 1 then it will select register bank 1 and if it is 1 0 it will go for register bank 2 if it is 1 1 it will go for the register bank 3 
so by giving suitable psw positions in 8051 that is a program status bar we can define the memory uh, define the suitable register banks this is about uh, the architecture of 8051 so if it is asked for uh, writing for five marks you have to write down all these things and uh, let us go for the memory organization in 8051 we know that from the features of microcontroller 8051 so there are uh, program memory and data memory that is program memory is read only memory and data memory is random access memory so internal program memory is 4 kilobyte capacity and internal ram capacity is 128 byte okay so not only 128 byte it has 256 means 128 remaining 128 byte is special function registers but we know that it has 16 bit address line so it says that if it is 16 bit address line 2 to the power of 16 means 64 kilobytes of memory locations can be mapped by those address line means it has capability 8051 can able to map the locations of 64 kilobyte locations therefore if your program is less than 4 kilobyte that is program memory that is P, uh, rom locations of uh, 4 kilobyte is enough for your program you can go for internal ram or internal memory if it is if you want to extend the memory location you can go for that is external memory locations okay that is uh, it is these operations are controlled by a pin ea0 uh, ea that is what i told extend the address extend the address pin with the if you will make it as zero your microcontroller can utilizes 60 kilobyte of location from the external memory if uh, ea pin is make it as logic one your microcontroller will utilizes the 4 kilobyte of internal memory location that in order to write the program and in case of ram it has 128 byte internal ram that means uh, 128 byte extra special function register so these special function registers also having some uh, apart from special function register few locations can also be utilized so that we call it as a bit addressable memory locations uh, let us discuss the data memory okay because 4 kilobytes of rom is fixed so you can utilized it is a uh, inbuilt a uh, memory location it can be utilized for program for data memory you can observe here internal ram so internal ram it has 128 byte means uh, it has the location 256 locations uh, that is 256 byte of locations you can 00 to ff location so 00 to 7f location is a direct in direct and indirect addressing method of 128 byte internal ram so that 128 byte internal ram we can observe here so 128 byte internal ram will be classified into so four different register banks and um, bit addressable area and general purpose area so these are the location that is 128 byte is classified then indirect addressing only which has 8f to ff including special function registers that is indirect and direct addressing special function registers are directly addressed you cannot utilize the special function register locations but indirect addressing locations you can utilize this. it it is apart from the special function register locations okay so this is about the internal ram structure of 8051 
and included special function register what i told so special function registers are directly addressed to memory location so these are having the specific location address that is b register as f0 f0 to f7 and accumulator as e0 to e7 psw register d0 to d7 and instruction pointer register b8 to bf and uh, p3 port p3 also utilizes the location b0 to b7 and uh, in interrupt enable pin also utilizes a8 to af and p2 port is utilizes a0 to af uh, a0 to a7 and scon and s buffer s buffer register for serial control register it uses the location from 98 to 9f and uh, port p1 register uh, it uses it utilizes the locations of 90 to 97 and timer control registers from 88 to 8f uh, uses a timer control and timer mode tl0 t1 tl1 th0 th1 so these are the timer locations can be utilized in between 88 to 8f locations and 80 location is for PO stack pointer and data pointer register locations either any one can be utilized and 87 location it is utilized for pcon register that is power control register here you can observe scon tcon pcon scon is a serial control register tcon is a timer control register and pcon is a power control registers and uh, that is about the internal memory if you want to connect 60 kilobytes of external rom or 60 that is uh, 64 kilobytes of ram how can we connect the external memory locations or how can you fetch the external memory location to microcontroller that is also a one of a major constraint in 8051 microcontroller in order to connect 8051 to any external memory that can be connected in this way that is ports of p0 and p2 we know that p0 and p2 it, have, it has the address lines from a0 to a16 and data lines of d0 to d7 okay so lower order address line and lower order data lines means a nor ad0 to ad7 are multiplexed in the port p0 so directly you can connect all the eight pins of p0 p0.02 p0.7 to the ram if you are connecting the memory that is ram read only memory uh, random access memory then you can connect that lines to ram or if you are connect if you are communicating with the program memory you can disconnect ram you can place random uh, read only memory in that place and the latch is also connected latch means if you are connect if you are communicate once you are placing the address of lower order address of the ram then after that you want to place the data during that time you have to latch the address line okay so therefore address latch latch is connected or connected in between p naught to this ram so that pin is connected to ALE, address latch enable. If you will make this ALE as zero, immediately ALE, that is address will be gets latched. Okay. And P2 pin, we know that it has higher order address. Directly, you can connect it to the RAM or ROM also. If you are connecting, if you are processing the ROM, then you can connect these two P0 and P2 to this ROM. Otherwise, you can connect it to RAM okay and we can see that here read and write controls are there in ram but in case of rom we know that it is only read only memory therefore serially one time you can send the information multiple time you cannot read the information from this rom therefore one time serially program so for serial programming we can use the serial enable okay p serial enable here oe is nothing but a output enable okay means write and read controller if you want to transfer if you want to write the information to ram 
you can enable this pin if you want to if you want the information from the ram to microcontroller you can go for read okay read information means you are getting information to microcontroller write information means if you are transferring the information to other chip okay in case of rom only one option is there that means you can transfer the information to rom not from rom to microcontroller okay so how to transfer the information first you have to place the higher order and lower order bit uh, lower order address lines through p0 and p2 so once address is placed in ram then you can latch the address then you can place the data line at the same time you can enable the read or write operation whatever you want and you can transfer the or you can communicate the information with external memory okay by this way you can achieve the connection between microcontroller and the external memory okay so next uh, very significant discussion is on the counters and timers so what do you mean by the counter because 8051 microcontroller has two 16 bit timers timers that is timer 0 and timer 1 okay so throughout this lecture i can use it as a t0 and t1 okay means timer 0 and timer 1 so basically what is a timer timer is a device used to measure the time delay and uh, the counter is a device used to count the number of clock pulse or number of event but here both the devices are utilizes the oscillator to get the clock signal that's what i told the oscillator is a device which generates the clock signal to cpu and cpu will perform the operation with the reference of this clock signal okay and 16 bit timer is functional as a 2 8 bit register so what are those register that is lower timers and higher timers here you can see in this picture the timer and control operations are controlled by t mode register that means uh, here we can observe the tl not th not is concerned with the timer zero okay lower order bits lower order byte is called as a tl not and higher order byte of the timer 0 is mentioned as a th not in the same way in timer 1 lower order timer is mentioned as a tl1 and higher order timer is mentioned as a th1 and what is t mod register t mod register which will controls the operation of the timer uh, timer operations so here you can observe that t naught it is also 8 bit register but 8 bit register is split up into the two timers this t mod register uh, is a 8 bit register so first 4 bit or lower order byte is utilized for lower order bits are utilized for timer t0 and higher order 4 bits are utilized for timer t1 so first pin in the both t0 and t1 you can observe the gate that gate is a pin or a bit which defines whether you are enabling the timer through the software way or in a hardware way if it is in reset condition you can go for hardware way if it is in reset condition you can go for the software way to enable the timer pin okay both the t0 and t1 can be enabled by hardware or bo or in the software if the gate bit is in one that indicates that you are choosing hardware way to enable the timer and here it was uh, not mentioned here with the question mark that is nothing but a c bar t okay c bar t is nothing but a bit which defines whether your timer is configured to measure the time delay or to count the number of event it will define that whether you are using as a timer or a counter operation if it is one that indicates that your microcontroller is configured for 
timer operation if it is zero then it is acts as a counter okay and what about m0 and m1 bit so m0 and m1 bit is a combination so by this combination both the timers can be acts as a 13 bit timer bar counter 16 bit timer bar counter or 8 bit auto reload uh, timer mode and a split timer mode operation can be utilized based on the combination of modes if it is 0 0 it is acts as a 13 bit t bar c and if it is 0 1 the timers can be acts as a 16 bit timer if it is 1 0 it acts as a 8 bit auto reload auto reload means so once it will reaches its maximum value again it will starts from its initial position that is called as 8 bit auto reload and what about the split timer mode that is timers operations can be operated by splitting its into 8 8 bits and what about t con register it is a fundamental register which will controls the operation of a timer that is you can observe here the tf0 and tf1 and uh, tr0 and tr1 and ie1 ie0 and ie1 it0 and it1 are the bit positions in tcon register it is also 8 bit register tf0 and t1 tf1 that is set if overflow occurs in the timer bar counter 0 and 1 else it is in reset condition means if you are make it as a if any overflow occur in the counters timer bar counter uh, 0 and 1 then it, is, it will be set otherwise it is in reset condition if any overflow occurs then this flag register will be set so tr0 and tr1 that is timer controller used to perform the counter operation if you will make it as a set the counter will get enabled if it is reset that counter will be disabled okay and ie ie0 and ie1 it is also used for enabling and disabling of the interrupt if it is in set condition that indicates that the interrupt is enabled particular interrupt is enabled for int0 and int1 if it is in reset condition it disables the interrupt of int0 and int1 and it0 and it1 this bit controls the timer as an interrupt set enables timer interrupt that is uh, timers can be acts as an interrupt and uh, which will be utilized for the operations with uh, for timer applications that is about the timers and let us go for the input and output ports of 8051 as we know that it has four port 32 pins for io operation pins are configured with the logic one then it acts as an input if all the pins are make it as a logic one all the pins are can be utilized for input operation if all are configured with the zero then it can be utilized as a output pins so let us go for the pins uh, ports of 8051 that is four ports so port 0 port 0 is utilized for the two function when external memory is connected the lower order address byte is applied to this pins else all the pins were utilized for the io operations means if you are connecting a memory to this microcontroller lower order address byte is applied to this pin else it can be utilized for io operation if you are using memory interface then lower order address can be connected to p0 otherwise you can go for any io operations when p0 port is configured as an output sometimes it will be acts as an output means memory to io devices memory to microcontroller it will act as output then other ports are assigned with the pin with the built-in pull-up register connected to plus 5 VCC means remaining all ports are make it as a high that indicates the P0 will act as an output remaining all will be disabled all the ports will be get disabled so therefore two multi functions can be uh, used by port 0 and port 1 
it is a true io port with a built in pull up register means if your pull up register is connected immediately uh, if it is there is no function with the ports immediately the reg the port uh, pins will become disabled and port 2 is also same as port 0 when external memory is connected higher order address byte is applied to this pin else all the pins were utilized for io port means these are P, uh, we know that p0 and p2 are connected for external memory interface so p0 is used for lower order address bytes and uh, p2 is uh, port 2 is utilized for higher order address lines if it is connected as an input otherwise it will act as a io operation for any application you can utilize so port 3 is same as a port 1 when port 3 p3 port is configured as output so pin can receives the 10 millivolts that means it is concerned with exceptionally concerned with the voltages if it is configured as an input it can receive less than 10 millivolts and what uh, will come to the serial port that is serial communication we know that there is a two types of communication one is uh, serial uh, that is a uh, that is there is a two types in communication that is serial communication and parallel communication so serial communication means uh, we are communicating the information we are transferring the information bit by bit is called as a serial way of communication parallel way of communication means all the bits we are placing in a different channels individual channels and will send the information at a single shot that is called a parallel communication for serial communication in 8051 it will utilizes the uart uart means universal asynchronous receiver and transmitter so uart will utilizes the scon register so scon register is also 8 bit register you can observe here the lower order bytes of ti and ri it is transmitter and receiver interrupt flag if ti will set once all the 8 bit data were completely transferred means it will indicates that the data trans successful transmission of the data and uh, reception of a data if ti flag is set as a one that indicates all the 8 bit of information were transferred successfully and in the same way ri indicates that all the 8 bit of data were received successfully to the receiver and TB, TB8 and RB8 are the bits which can be set or reset by the programmer which determines the ninth bit in the UART code. That means if you are setting it as a even parity or R parity that will be defined by a programmer. So through this pin transmitter bit 8 transmitter bit uh, receiver bit 8 will be defined by an user. Okay. REN is a receiver enable flag that can be set or clear by the user for the reception of the serial data. REN means we are the microcontroller is enabled for serially receiving the information. So that status will be defined by REN. And SM0, SM1 and Yes, SM0 and SM1 will defines the capacity of the serial communication. If these two combination is 0, 0, it will act as a S mod 0. S mod 0 means it will act as a serial communication. Uh, ports are configured for shift register with the band of frequency, internal frequency by 12 and if the serial communication combination sm0 and sm1 is 0 1 it will op acts in a s mod 1 8 bit uart operation with the band is variable we can vary the bandwidth and s mod 2 if it is 1 0 combination 9 bit uart with the band frequency of frequency divided by 32 and 64 if it is s mod 3 sm0 and sm1 is 1 1 then 9 bit UART with the band is variable. So this is a, a serial communication of 8051. And in the same way, one more register is available in microcontroller that to save the power in 8051. 
This register uses 8 bit pattern to save the power. Let us see that how it will save the power. Here you can see in this picture 8 bit locations are available that is from D, uh, D0 to D7 that is IDL to S mod. So in LSB IDL, PD, GF0 and GF1 remaining 3 bits are not utilizable only S mod is utilized or placed in D7 position. What about S mod? Set baud rate will get double and reset indicates that frequency is divided by 32 to set the baud rate means if s mod is in set condition it will doubles the baud rate so what about the baud rate it will defines the speed of transmission of information serially and if it is a baud rate if it is in reset condition then the frequency internal frequency is divided by 32 to set the baud rate gf1 and gf0 so general purpose flag registers set by a programmer so programmer can define this flag register if any requirement you can programmer can utilize these two pd and idl mode are a very significant part of a pcon register because pd and idl mode will uh, gives you a clear picture that how to save the power in microcontroller in PD mode, clock input for both the CPU and the peripheral devices is off. Okay, that you can observe here. Here it is a PD mode. Okay, and this is PD and this is IDL. So in this PD mode, both the CPU and peripheral devices is in off condition. If you will make this as a zero, this bit as a zero whatever the input will come through the AND gate the output is always zero if pd mode power down mode is make it as zero okay or one here one means it is an active low devices if it is zero then it will get activated and then it is one then it is deactivated then once you deactivated once you press the power down mode all the activities of the timers interrupt serial that is peripheral controller that clock signal sent to a peripheral devices and cpu both are in off condition if you are make it as a ideal idle mode then the clock will supply to only peripheral devices not for the cpu operations okay so by this way you can save the power okay in microcontroller if you make it as a power down mode the clock supply to all the cpu and peripheral devices will be in the off state if you are make this as a idea idle mode then the C the clock pulses are directly supplied to the peripheral devices not for the cpu okay so uh, student this is about uh, the complete uh, unit one of the microcontroller so in this lecture uh, we were discussed about various uh, features of 8051 microcontrollers and uh, the architecture the pin configuration and architecture of 8051 microcontroller and various functional blocks and the um, memory organization and input and output parts of 8051 and the serial communication of microcontroller and the timer and the power control modes of microcontroller thank you